Okay, so moving on to chapter 19 using Cisco access lists. Um, this is, I think this is a pretty important chapter. Uh, access control lists are important for a lot of things throughout Cisco networking. Um, so this is, this is important to know pretty much anywhere in your, your Cisco career. Um, we'll start off by talking about ACL functions. Access control lists, or ACLs, are used for several functions. The CCNA primarily covers the use of ACLs for uh, packet filtering, uh, quality of service, or QoS, uh, dial-on-demand routing, DDR, uh, network address translation, or NAT, and route filtering. Uh, but packet filtering and NAT will be the main things that are covered with actual configurations on the exam. So being able to, uh, to, to set up an ACL for packet filtering and especially being able to set up stuff for, uh, for NAT, which we get into a lot more deeply in the next chapter, Chapter 20, um, you'll very likely see an, uh, an exam uh, simulation that covers NAT. I know that I did on mine. so. So for packet filtering, um, packet filtering is the most fundamental use of an ACL and works as a basic firewall. Um, the ACL is created with the list of permit and deny statements. Uh, after the ACL is created, it is applied to an interface in either an inbound or outbound direction. You know, so whether the packets are flowing in or the packets are flowing out. And then the, the interface checks every packet in the specified direction against the ACL to determine whether it's, it's actually allowed or denied. For quality of service, uh, quality of service is used to ensure that priority traffic is in fact prioritized. Uh, it prevents time sensitive applications such as VoIP from being starved out by other bandwidth hungry applications that are not considered priority. Um, ACLs can be used with a, a variety of QoS mechanisms to identify priority traffic and police non-priority traffic. So you really, um, you really get into QoS really, really deeply if you go into the the CCNA voice track. Um, you know, if you've got a limited amount of bandwidth on any on any given line, and particularly for WAN links, uh, where you really have a, a limitation on the amount of bandwidth so you, that you can send out. So if you don't, um, you know, use some of the QoS uh, technologies to or methods to uh, ensure that applications, particularly voice over IP, um, which is extremely uh, Detrimentally affected by a lack of, you know, lack of bandwidth, and you know, if, if it doesn't get there quickly enough, or if packets arrive uh, with with varying time delays, uh, you may get you know voice that doesn't work at all. And if you've you've got other applications running on there, like scavenger applications, like um, you know LimeWire or any kind of um, torrents, uh, they can easily eat up all the bandwidth so that you're your time sensitive applications that you have to have don't don't go through so ACLs can be used with QoS although um, really like nowadays QoS is going to be um, managed by a class map which identifies traffic um, a policy map which um, applies a policy to that traffic and a service policy which um, applies the policy map to a particular interface so just kind of a, a quick little one off on the QoS stuff but you can actually use ACLs uh, for, for certain QoS mechanisms as well. Um, Dial-on-demand routing. Uh, Dial-on-demand routing is used for services that are not always on. Uh, for instance, if a router uh, must at times dial out to a service provider to pass certain traffic, such as credit transactions, dial-on-demand is frequently used. Uh, this is a lot more prevalent when there's a per minute or per kilobyte charge from the ISP for utilizing certain types of WAN connections. Um, ACLs can be used to identify traffic patterns that warrant dialing out. So, you know, f it, for instance, um, you know, some some locations might have to pass credit transactions. They might have a, a primary WAN connection for that. They might have a, a, a dial backup or something otherwise that only only comes on whenever um, the the primary WAN connection is not available, has gone down for some reason, and you've got a, a credit transaction that needs to go through. Like, you might not want to have a, a dial-up connection necessarily on all the time because you might be getting charged for every single minute and that can add up to a lot of money for the customer so you can set up ACLs to identify that you know that a traffic is trying to go to a certain destination that you know is your your server that uh, manages um, and, and confirms credit transactions and then actually causes the uh, the device to dial out so that it can it can implement that link uh, and then network address translation, like I said, this is a 
This is a big one we get into really deeply. You know, all of chapter 20 is basically NAT. Uh, network address translation maps one IP address to another IP address. Um, one to many NAT, uh, where a single public IP is mapped to numerous private LAN IPs by assigning them to separate port numbers, has been widely implemented and is responsible for extending the life of IPv4 well beyond what we thought possible. Um, if we hadn't been using NAT, uh, that you know, like we have been for quite some time, IPv4 would have run out quite some time ago. Now IPv6 is still is still on the way, but we are still getting a lot of use out of NAT uh, with IPv4, and we presumably will continue to get a lot of use with uh, that with NAT for years to come. Um, you basically, you know, by assigning random port numbers uh, to different IPs on the private side, you you have up to I think 65,000 uh, some odd. Uh, IPs that you can map to one public IP theoretically. Um, ACLs are used to identify what IPs are and are not allowed to be translated with NAT. Um, and again, NAT's tested heavily on the exam. Uh, route filtering. Access lists can also be used to filter out routing updates when needed. Uh, for instance, you may not want to advertise routes out to a connected ISP because of network security requirements. Um, ACLs can be used to, dis to filter out route updates specifically without filtering traffic from the same locations. Um, whenever you do this, you're actually going to want to use a, a distribute list. Uh, so you know the ACL is created, and then applied as a distribute list under the the config router mode. So you know the same location you go to if you're trying to set up RIP or OSPF or whatever kind of dynamic routing protocol, you know go into uh, that that particular you know router RIP to get you into config dash router mode or router OSPF whatever you're trying to configure. And then the uh, the syntax is distribute dash list the the number of the ACL you've created, and then either in or out to decipher whether it's uh, going in or out. So we're going to talk about three types of access lists today: um, standard access lists, ex extended access lists, and named access lists. Which uh, named access lists are actually just take on the function of either a, a standard or a Extended access list, but we'll we'll start off with extended access list. Or excuse me, we'll start off with standard access list. Uh, standard ACLs only filter based on the source address of the packets. So it, you know, when a, a packet comes into the router, the only thing that a standard ACL is going to look at is where that packet originally came from to make a determination on whether it needs to uh, filter it or not. Um, the ACL is a list of permit and deny statements. Um, you know, in in an order. Uh, traffic is inex excuse me. Traffic is explicitly permitted and implicitly denied. Basically, what that means is, for traffic to be allowed, once you create an ACL for traffic to be allowed, you have to expli explicitly say that I want to permit this traffic. I want to permit this traffic from this source, and I want to permit this traffic from this source. If you don't specify certain any type of traffic in that list, there is an implicit deny statement at the end of every ACL. So anything that is not explicitly permitted is denied when it gets to the end of that ACL. So uh, because there is an implicit deny statement at the end of the ACL, you must have at least one permit statement in the ACL or all traffic will be blocked. So basically if you say you created an ACL and it just had one deny statement and it was, you know, deny, you know, from this IP address. Well, it it would deny from that IP address when it read the first line, but because there's no permit any or no permit of any type of traffic after that, the implicit deny statement at the end of the list is going to make sure that every single piece of traffic is is denied. So just remember that on every ACL, there's an implicit deny statement at the very end of the list after it's gone through the all the other statements above it. Um, ACLs also search from the top down until a match is found. If the match is found, it stops searching through the permit and deny statements and applies the command to the packet. So as soon as it, it finds a match statement, you know, starting from the top of the access list going down, it stops searching. It, it's, it's matched the packet, it just does it. It doesn't need to read through the entire ACL every single time if it's already found a match for it. Um, because of this, it is imperative to order the ACL correctly. Um, Again, if the ACL does not find a match, it will drop the packet because of the implicit deny statement at the end of every ACL. 